Thanks for staying with us. You're welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Nigeria's creative and entertainment industry was again, again recognized during the outgoing year by government as well as private sector players as a potential goldmine for job creation and global marketing of the Nigerian brand. The challenges remain though, especially in the face of harsh economic conditions at home and lack of funding for projects. But as a brand new year beckons, what are the prospects of more growth in the industry? For that and a whole lot more, we're now being joined here by Makinde Adeniro, a seasoned creative director and the brain behind a number of influential projects in the Nigerian film, entertainment and theatre sector. Good morning. Mankind, some of us know you as, but <laughs> <laughs> compliment of the season. Same to you. Same Good to you. have you join us yeah. in the studio. Thank you. All right. I mean, let's start this way. Um, a lot of people will look at um, year 2023 mm. uh, through the eyes of the December, how the year is ending. Mm. And people will say that in spite of everything, mm. that it looks like there's an upscale mm. of activities um, in Lagos, a bit in Abuja, in Calabar, in a few other places in Banu and Storm. Yeah. Um, you were part of um, some of the plays mm. that took... Um, uh, place in Lagos yeah. during the youth high season. Um, that's Joseph Edgar's musical. Yeah. Uh, Bolalio Stim Peters had Saru, is still on. Yes. Uh, last night we were actually meant to be at Kakadu, the musical. We had uh, them here. Then Glover as Hall, guests. There is, uh, and Glover Hall, true. Uh, Joker, Joker Silver, absolutely. Will you say that with that, um, it, it's kudos to the creative sector? And is there, have, have we witnessed with what we have experienced, a kind of renaissance on live theatre? Ah, that's, that's a very... Uh, because I, I want to find the right way to put it. Because even when things were seen as down, mm -hmm. every December, it, ha it has become a religion. Something must happen. Yeah. But what is crucial is... I ask myself, even as a practitioner of uh, over 30 years, yeah. I ask myself, how have we been doing it? Yeah. Because there's no support. We still all have to run out and all of that. You know? So it will happen irrespective of. It will happen. But for me, that is not a signal that things are getting better. Mm. No, that will not be. Because a Mark in the a Joker Silva yeah. will continue, because this is what we do. That's right. We'll continue to get relevant in it and all of that, and, and all others, you know. But it, 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 that, that is not a signal that things are getting better. Because if each of us come out to tell you the process that mm. we've had to go to get those things happening, um, yeah. you then begin to ask us, why are you still there? <laughs> it's a tough one. However, it's a signal to the government, to people in place to help, right? Yeah. That the work, um, the, the personnel, people are still waiting. Mm. The experts on the field mm. are still waiting for the government to help us get things better. Because in a situation, let, let me play a scenario to you. In a situation where uh, you have a budget to run a play, and for every play we run, mm. live theater now, yes. we have to build a theater. I'm using the word, the word build. A theater or a set? The theater. <laughs> we have to, and I will explain. Elsewhere, where there are functional infrastructure mm. for theater. Mm. The light, the sound, everything is there. Mm. So when you are paying, you are paying for those facilities. Total to be, experience. Total experience. That's what you are paying for as a producer. But where you just have places that you can barely say this is a standard theater, mm. after paying for the hall, huge amount, then you go and pay for your lights to come and rig there. You pay for your sound to come and be in place. You pay for practical. In fact, in some cases, you pay for the chairs that you have to arrange in some of those <laughs> venues. Why? Mm. They are not standard theater. Mm. So by the time you calculate 
all of those funds that you've put in there, you realize, and you do this every time, you realize that for every show you put up, mm. you build a theater. That's correct. So that makes it very, very difficult. But the resilience of those in that sector needs uh, the complementary effort of government. Mm. Now, when, when I use the word complementary effort, I, I'm, I'm not part of those who believe that money is what is needed for the industry. From government? From government. I'm not, you know, no, 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 no. I, I believe the first thing is policy. If we have, let's look at it again. Because policy, making policy is the template upon which everybody can start on the same page. Mm. That it, 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 because policy helps to define structure. Yeah. Structure enables infrastructure. Infrastructure encourages business. So if we don't have people who are seeing all of this and coming in to invest, right? there will continue to be that problem. Mm. So I want to ask, because you've spoken about how here, even if you get a theater, you have to build, you have to build your own theater <laughs> for your shows. But I see that you have a show, I believe, that's going to show theater in England yes. next year yes. on our law. Yeah. Correct. And I want to ask about that. Um, do you think that the structure over there allows you more creative freedom? Um, in terms of when you want to put on a show, when you're writing and producing a show, and also what your role is in terms of our consciousness, our historical and cultural consciousness in Nigeria, where you feel like the theatre, you know, the important role that theatre plays in maintaining, you know, our culture and our history. Okay. Yes, uh, in the Western world, uh, there are, not that they don't have their challenges, there are challenges everywhere. But we can begin to compare in terms of their structure, you know, uh, of all the things that I mentioned earlier, infrastructure and all of that. You, you have it there and, uh, and all of that. And their, their policy, when you go through some of their uh, uh, policy for all these things, you see that there is enough security to ensure that investors can come in, mm. right, and can always come in to do something. And as for other, uh, the, the last question that you asked, I say something, and I say it without apology. For every performative arts, every, I may bold to say it, the theater is the laboratory. So, and it has been there constantly. And I'll give you an example. Uh, most actors on Hollywood, when they finish a major project, yeah. they find another job in Broadway. Mm. Why are they doing that? Retooling themselves for the next project. So the theater has done a lot in preserving all those cultural elements. If you look at the history, the Alani Joe and all of that, mm. uh, the theater has helped a lot to keep it whole, to keep turning to... Okay, look at uh, the show going on uh, in Glover. That's the kingdoms, that's naked, which has uh, the semblance of uh, an Ishekiri culture. Mm. One of the things you see when you, when you look at that play are those things that are value, the cultural values, the, the aesthetics, the costume, and all of that. Mm. And theater has done this over and over and over. So for me, that's what it is. That's what it is. We, we, we lose uh, the theater. We don't help the theater, mm. right? We, it's like washing away a part of our cultural uh, display, yeah. part of our cultural archiving, because these are mostly what it goes into. Mm. All right. Um, I'd I, I like to come back to the area that you touched on briefly, yeah. uh, intervention, mm. government, and then the keyword policies. Mm. Um, People will argue that there are policies, that Nigeria has a national cultural policy. Mm. Nigeria also has a national film policy. Mm. 
Uh, and they would argue that the reasons why we have some of the agencies that we do have today, mm -hmm. you know, is because, you know, they are all products of those policies. Of those policies. Maybe what is required will be updating as the, you know, uh, as the policy, you know, uh, stipulates, updating them after uh, some number of years, five years, ten years or something. What do you think is lacking in the existing policies that we have for the culture, for the creative sector? And secondly, perhaps more importantly, what are your thoughts on the intervention mm -hmm. that the government, and I'm saying government uh, because it is at the federal level, it is the same party that has produced the, you know, the government of the day from Buari to Ashwajibola Ashwajibola. and Tinobu. Yes. Twice um, since the new ministry, art, culture, and creative economy, you know, since it was carved out of a ministry of information, we've seen creative people been taken to Abuja to meet with the minister and to meet with the vice president. But in all of those faces, people say that where are the theatre artists? Where are the visual artists? Where are the fashion designers? You know, where are the photographers? All you tend to see, uh, it's either Nollywood actors or to some extent, <laughs> music entrepreneurs. <laughs> And, and it is strange, and people will say that, oh, that's, that, that's what they did for almost eight years of worry. <laughs> and then it's the same thing. Why does Nollywood tend to dominate the cultural space as far as inter, you know, interfacing with government is concerned? Thank you so much. Um, about policy that you mentioned, uh, yeah, there are policy. Anyway, there is no how uh, the industry is sustained. Mm. In, in, in governance mm. without uh, without policy. There are. But the question we need to ask ourselves, very importantly, yeah. how well mm. have we gone with those policies? Yeah. Are they compliant to the realities of today? So when, when I talk about policy, I've had people challenging me, I said there's no. Mm. Because if there is, right, we won't be where we are. Some of those institutions we are talking about would have been compliant to the realities of today in terms of practice. Even government is losing. Mm. Yes, government is losing money. If you have to put money into something, you are expecting something back. Yeah. Yeah? There's the look, look, uh, liquid money, uh, especially for the cultural sector. There's what we call uh, liquid money and the physical. The liquid money is even much more needed in a place like Nigeria, because that is what keeps the society, it keeps the value, the cultural value, all that percolates down to our, our traditions. So, it is in that guise that I say, there is no policy. Mm. As for the other one, I think government, and, and, I, and, and I, I'm not saying this uh, to cast as passion, on government or to but I, i'm saying it in the light of the need to open their eyes mm. shine your eyes <laughs> yes and it is not to disrespect uh, my colleagues who uh, were invited mm. down there uh, too much of individualism yeah is not helping the sector to grow mm. and too much of lack of knowledge of the industry is not helping the government to understand what needs to be done, the kind of investment that they need to put in in the sector. Mm. Yeah. So the government, first and foremost, I'll advise them to understand that the faces you see on TV mm. are the actors. They are not necessarily administrators in the industry. So the government needs to do more in knowing that industry yeah and know those to pull to table in terms of policy making. Where you are, Nollywood has done well, and it has become the, the bride of the industry. But it does not mean Nollywood is the industry that we are talking about. Mm. There's a whole lot about the industry that needs to be put in place, that needs to be understood. If we want to continue in 2024 with this uh, 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 Ashwajus uh, government, and we want to do the same thing that we have been doing in years past, that means from, we have failed, mm. even before we get to the end of the line. 
we must approach this with the same sense we approached all those corporate uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, the industry the banking industry and all of that because the idea when uh, the new ministry came up and they talked about creative economy yeah. i told people i said government is now sensing that there is money in this place how to make it is their problem <laughs> so be, yes how to come in and make it is their problem so they need understanding real understanding it's not about throwing figure i mentioned earlier i talked about I'm not one of those who believed in uh, it is money that they will throw into this place. To Project does not make an industry. Mm. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. It's not what we, those are individual businesses. Yeah. If you want to help them, help them understanding that I'm just helping that individual to fulfill uh, uh, his project. Yeah. It does not mean that is what will shock. See, okay, let me give you one example that baffles me every day. I was a chairman of the National Association of Nigerian Theatre Practitioners, Lagos State Chapter. Right. And if, yes, and the first thing I did was I went into Ajegunle. I went, I was meeting artists there, wanting to know, to have an idea of how big. And you find out that there are a lot of troops, private troops in Ajegunle. In Bariga, lot of private troops. What does that mean? These are people who have, by themselves, created jobs for themselves. Mm. The best the government can do is to research that place and all other places across the nation to know their need and help them with policy. Yeah. You get it. Now, if you just pull from the top, those who are most of the time actors because their faces are on TV, those people are, uh, are practicing actors. They are not necessarily uh, admin. But, but a lot of people will say that musicians uh, do not uh, cry to government for interventions. They don't even go to PMAN, yet they're the ones clearing out, you know, as they will say, <laughs> globally, yeah. you know, with Afrobeat and everything. Yes. I, see, all of us are still crying about the same thing. Mm. We are not all starting on the same <laughs> template. See, the industry is gradually becoming a conduit pipe upon which corporate uh, organizations, government organizations are siphoning money out to just projects. Mm. And not, not <coughs> infrastructure, not structure to... An average Nigerian uh, I, I, is I, a performer. I, I, I hope you are not trying to refer to the budget of your ministry, the ministry of your sector, where it is said that uh, there will be street light or something in the no well the, i i try in the constituency of the minister i try to pull back mm. for now i will give every government that comes in place at least one year i've seen that thing and i try to understand what's behind it but i'm watching to see how mm. that comes to play and all of that i've seen it but i, I will try not to comment now as much as possible. I'll talk about the old things and what we can take in. You will comment after one year like Professor Walishenka. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is always fair mm. to leave it. Sometimes when they say things, you, you may get an interpretation that is different from what they are saying. So the best place you can wait is to wait for them to begin action. And yeah. then you begin. Even Lagos State. See, I'm a Lagosian. And I look at our governor in terms of uh, structure, in terms of infrastructure for the industry, and I'm telling myself, we may not get anywhere as it is. Yes, there are building infrastructure all over the place and all of that. But is that the way to go now? Because if we don't put that template of policy in terms ground, of support for the creative sector, in, for this creative sector, building those infrastructure is like building. I, I hate mentioning this, but the theater, the theater that was that were built, the Lagos theaters, the Lagos theaters. If you go back there now, yeah, go and find out what is happening in all of those theaters. Mm -hmm. I won't say more. I commend the Lagos State government for building those theaters. Even when, in my view, at that time, I said, oh, 
This is not standard, standard. But do you know what? This is an attempt. It's a good place to start. We can always come up with it. But sad. Because there are no effective policies to guide that. There was a time I held the LIRS. I held them when I was Lagos State General. For, and some of the things we discussed were, well, look, what are, you, what are the services you are rendering to the sector if you must collect from them? Yes. Mm. And I said, All right. <laughs> we really have to go, but I just want, you know, the last few seconds that we have, mm. uh, did anything stand out for you in the sector in 2023? And what would you like to see in 2024? In just a few words. In the, uh, in the sector? Yes. The, yes. Uh, the effort of the people, of the practitioners, is standing out. Like the one you mentioned at the end of the year. Some of us believe nothing was going to happen mm. this year. Lo and behold, we saw plays, projects happening. Mm. That is standing so strong for me. Mm. And what should 2024 look like for you, for the creative industry? It, it should be better now that we have a new government, a new minister that is seeming like doing something. Mm -hmm. But we still have to wait. But I, I expect that with that creative economy that is added, yeah that we, we are driving in a direction that is very positive. Fantastic. All right, on that note, Mr. Makinde, I want to thank you thank for you. joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you so this much. This last day of the year.